Today on Woodworking with Wes, we're going to talk about router bits. We did a little video on the routers that I use. Here's a couple of the ones that I have. But we're going to talk a little bit about why I use different sizes of routers and the bits that I use that are most common in the shop. First thing, let's get some background. Um, we talked about having a small router and a little bit larger one for the bigger jobs. And one of the things that we do and one of the reasons we have two different size routers is because router bits come with different size shanks. Now the shank is the stem that goes into your router. This is a quarter inch shank. This is a half inch shank. And those are standard for American routers. Your specialty bits, now this is a style and rail set for doors. This is a specialty bit. They usually have half inch shank. They're a little more heavy duty. And this is the collet that goes in the router that the half inch shank would go into. Now I can change the collet out on my big router and go to a quarter inch shank just like that. But most quarter inch, uh, most of my quarter inch routers that I use, I use in my small router. And it only has a quarter inch collet. So this only takes quarter inch, this will take quarter and half. But here's some of the bits that I use the most. A roundover bit is one of the most common bits that you use in the shop. And it's used for putting a round edge on the edge of your material. You have a bearing here that rides against the material, takes a, a, a roundover cut here, and they come in different sizes. The size is measured from the bearing to the outside of your carbide head. This is a quarter inch, three eighths, half inch. And the size of your round over is based on the size of the bit that you do. One of the other common bits that we use is a rabbit bit. The rabbit bit cuts a uh, square cut on the edge of your board. Again, your measurement is based from the bearing out. This is a three eighths rabbit. This also is a three eighths rabbit a little bit different in the depth of the rabbit that you can cut. One of the other bits that we use that's very common, this is a cove bit. And you can make a cove, cuts a little cove cut on your uh, board. Different size cove bits make different size flutes on the end of your board. The next one that we use a lot is a chamfer bit. Now. We have two different degrees. This is a 45 degree chamfer, and this is a 30 to 60 degree chamfer. We use that a lot. Flush trimmer bits are used to follow patterns. Um, if you're uh, cutting a board to a pattern, you would put this in. This rides against your pattern. Your bearing rides against your pattern, and your carbide head cuts your stock to uh, match your pattern. If you have a bigger piece, you use this. If you have a small piece, this. This also, uh, a small one like this, can be used to trim uh, plastic laminate. This is an OG cut. And there's different sizes, again, OG cut. The OG makes a decorative edge on your board. And different sizes of that. This is a bead cut bit. It makes a little decorative bead on the edge of your board. Now you can see all of these are quarter inch shanks and I ordered a set of bits from Amazon that had all these quarter inch shanks. I could have got the same set of bits with a half inch shank but then I would not have been able to use my small router for the smaller bits. But you can see I have bits that have a half inch shank that I use for my more heavy duty wood. Now I have another router just like this that I showed in my other video that does not have a D handle that I use solely for my router table. These bits here would go in my router table because they're uh, specifically designed for style and rail sets. This is a door edge bit and we use those in the router table. Let's make some cuts and show. Let's make a roundover cut, let's make a cove cut, and let's make an OG cut. And we'll show you the decorative edge 
that those put on. This is our roundover. Now we use a 3 8 roundover and you can see the nice edge that it puts on a board with our roundover. Now one of the things that I want to talk about that I do and I'll show you is if you push your router against the grain that gives you the smoothest cut but sometimes that will chip and so I almost always will back cut and then make my final cut to give my smooth edge. So if, let's just show you how I'm going to do that. That's how I end up with a nice smooth cut by making a back cut first and then going forward to clean it up to get a nice smooth edge. Let's try one of our other bits. Our next bit that we're going to demonstrate is a cove cut bit. So let's see what that looks like. It's a nice little channel on the edge of your board. Gives a nice decorative cove cut. That's why it's cold bit. Our next bit that we're going to do is an OG. And an OG is kind of a combination of a cove cut and a round over, one on top of the other. Let's make that cut show how that is. This is a more decorative cut used for the edges of, of uh, furniture pieces and to make a real statement with your wood as you make a pretty cut. Let's do that. The cove part and the roundover part makes a real pretty edge. Used a lot in furniture pieces, especially when you uh, get into your more decorative uh, pieces of furniture. A nice OG edge is very, very pretty. Having nice router bits allows you to do a lot of nicer stuff with your woodworking, nice edges. You can cut flutes. You can do all kinds of things with a router bit set. I have a new set that I just purchased and that these bits came out of, 130 pieces. You don't need to have that. You can start with as little as just four or five bits to get you going, to learn how to use your router, to learn what it can do. But as you get more experienced in your woodworking, the more bits you'll have. I have hundreds besides this. And you just have bits that will do everything that you need to do to allow you to build the kind of quality of work that you like to produce for yourself or for your clients if you're a, a professional woodworker like I am. But anyway, have fun. Routers are a great thing. And one of the must-haves in your woodworking tools. I use my router every day for all kinds of stuff. You will too. And we look forward to seeing you next time on Woodworking with Wes.